This is a NAES Interlibrary Loan System vit training video on checking for and filling interlibrary loan requests. For today's video, we will be working as the Lilac Public Library. I am already logged into the ILL system as the Lilac Public Library's Interlibrary Loan account. All libraries who participate in NAES Interlibrary Loan had signed an interlibrary loan agreement, which includes the clause that they will check their incoming requests each day their library is open. If you go to the link ILL info from the system, it will take you to a NAES website, which gives you the full text of the agreement that each library has signed. Um, so you are expected to check your requests each day the library is open, and you are expected to answer interlibrary loan requests within 24 hours of receiving them. So when you check it, you have one day to either say yes or no, or maybe. Um, so this video will explain how you can do those things. So I'm going to go back to the NACE ILL system, and I'm going to go to my request manager, which I'm doing with the quick link here. It's Quick Link Zero is the request manager. So here I have on the right hand side all of the things that are in the lender side for the Lilac Public Library right now. And I'm going to start from the bottom of the list and work my way up um, to just give you a quick overview of what the things are and how you should deal with them um, on a daily basis. So the first item here is whoops, is returned. I do not currently have anything in returned status, and I wouldn't act on it even if I did, because that's going to be driven by when an item arrives physically in the library. When you get the thing back, you come in here and you deal with it as a return. Um, there is a separate video that's, that talks about the returning and completing of transactions. The next thing here is a renew pending. This is something um, that is also covered in a video about renewals generally, but this is something you would want to act on right away. This is some library has asked to renew something they have borrowed from you. So if you have one, when you check your, your manager each day, you should definitely um, take a look and see what people are asking to renew and give them an answer. Either yes, they can or no, they cannot, so they know how to proceed with their patrons. Okay, pending cancel. This is another one where someone has asked is asking you to agree to something. Um, a library has sent a request and they are now canceling that request. You will be notified of it really just as a courtesy uh, by the system so that if you have already pulled the materials, you can put them back or if you have started to do any kind of work on this transaction um, that you will know to undo that work. Basically what you do with a pending cancel, you open it up, you see what they are, and then you have the option of confirming it or rejecting it. Um, but there's really no reason why you would ever reject a cancel request. Um, if they don't want the book, you don't want to send it to them. So you basically just need to confirm it, which will stop that transaction from moving forward any further, and it, it lets you know that that's no longer a thing in that anyone is in need of. So that's a quick thing, but you should definitely do it every time you come in here that you see that you have one. Renew overdue um, is also covered in the video about renewals, and it just like pending is someone is asking for a renewal, but in this case they're asking to renew something that is already overdue. So it should have come back to you already and has not, and they're asking to renew it, and you just need to say yes or no. Um, and as I said, there is a video specifically about renewals, um, so you should check that out to see um, exactly how to process those things and what your various options are. Okay, will supply in process. If there is anything in this line, it means that you are holding up a transaction for someone else. Um, it can only be in will supply in process if you put it there, and it will not go anywhere ever again for two years unless you take action on it. We strongly recommend against ever using this status because if you can't process things, you should just send them on to the next lender. You shouldn't hold them in case you get to it sometime. Um, but if you have done that, you should absolutely act on anything that is here um, immediately. When, every day when you come in here, you should clear anything out of this will supply and will supply in process uh, that got put there for whatever reason. So if you um, 
do have things there. You have a couple of choices that you can use there. You can ship it, which is the ideal thing if you can lend the item. You can tell them to retry it, and you should give them a note telling them when and why, and we'll see how that would work when we look at pendings, because it works the same way. You could make it a conditional, say we will lend you this if you never take it out of the library, if you promise to have it back in two days, whatever you have to put on there. Or you can say will not supply and just send it on to the next lender in the string and perhaps they can deal with it in a more timely manner than you can. Okay, and that brings us to pending. And the meat of your ILO uh, lender requests are going to be found here in the pending. Um, oh, the other one you could have is you could have a lost item on this list if somebody has lost one of your things. Um, I don't have any of those, and it only shows up if there are any. Um, so if you had that, you would want to follow up and find out what got lost and what you're doing about it. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go back to pending. We will display our pending items by clicking on pending. And that will show me... That will show me all of the things that are currently pending requests from someone for the Lilac Public Library. So I see we have four things um, here, three from Birch Public and one from the Newt School. And I can, from this point, do a couple of things. Um, if I want to print copy of what I have so that I can go to my shelves and see what I really have on hand. Um, I can just print this screen. I can print various reports of it um, and so forth. There is a separate video that covers all of your printing options and how to use them. So just know that you can print them if you need to. Um, we're going to proceed on the assumption that I have checked out what these requests are, I've gone to my catalog or to my shelves, and I know that I what I can do with each of these transactions. So I have, um, I might have some indicators here. This little push pinny thing would tell me if there were a, a note under that column, or a mark under that column, that there was a note from the potential borrower attached to this transaction, and I should go look at that note before I proceed. There are none in this particular case. There is also the potential of having a red flag here, which tells me that I am about to have this, this request move on to someone else because I have not acted on it, and it's been there for a couple days. So you should definitely deal with anything that has a red flag in a timely manner because it's going to move on. Um, you can just let it move on, but if you know you're not going to fill it, it is much better um, practice to explicitly say, I'm not going to fill this, tell them why if that's relevant, and then it will move on more quickly instead of waiting for the overnight processing for it to expire and move on anyway. So it will keep the system running more quickly if you go ahead and, and don't fill things. So I'm going to um, act, on, so I have a couple of choices here. I can act on the transaction individually by clicking on it and putting in what I want to put in. So I'm going to do that with this return to chaos request. I'm going to click on the title and that will open the full record display. I want to take all my actions on this transaction from this screen so that everything gets done. If I make changes here but I don't submit them, I just go back, those changes will have no effect at all. So I need to take all my action on this from this screen, including submitting my final changes. So I'm going to, in fact, not supply this. I'm going to say will not supply. I don't, I'm not required by the system to put a reason in, um, but it's a good idea to do so because it helps other people to know uh, whether or not it's worth trying again. So I'm going to put this one as... Uh, non-circulating. And I can put another note down here that says we only let these books be, oops, books be used in the library. Feel free to refer your patron to us for a visit. Okay, 
So we're not going to send our copy of um, Return to Chaos, but if their patron wants to come and visit the Lilac Public Library, we'll be happy to let them use it in-house. So I've changed my status, I've put a note, I've given a reason, I'm now going to click Submit. And it tells me my request is being processed, and then it tells me that it's successfully updated. And now this request has moved on to whoever's next in the lender string and is no longer part of my request string. So if I go back to my pending list, I now only have three because I took care of one of them. Now if I want to take the same action on all of these and not make any changes, I can do that. Or if I want to do that to any of them, I can do that. So let's say I know I'm going to ship creamy and crunchy with no issues and I'm going to ship whoops ship I have to actually get it clicked on properly so it changes okay so I have courage of turtles is set for shipped and creamy and crunchy is set for shipped I'm not giving a condition because it's shipped there's nothing to say um, but it defaults to omit condition automatically so I'm going to submit this screen and that will ship with no further notes, comments, or changes uh, the Courage of Turtles and Creamy and Crunchy. So I submit and those two titles are now shipped off to whoever it is that's getting them. Now I want to print, slip, print um, my slips so that I can send them to the proper place. That is covered in a different uh, video about how to deal with your shipping slips. Um, if you use your own shipping slips, you'll have to open the transaction to see who it is you're sending it to and fill out your own form. Um, so either way, you'll need to do that. But if you are using system shipping slips, you can just set them shipped and then you'll go as a later step to your print list. All right, so that leaves me with one more transaction here in my uh, request manager and that is death comes for the archbishop. So I'm going to lend this one, but I have some things I need to say to the borrower about this one. So they have asked, this one is, is came uh, to me, I'm going to lend it to them, but the normal due date would be December 16th, and I'm not really going to be available to deal with anything on November, on, I'm sorry, December 16th, because um, my library is going to be closed at that period. So I don't want it to come back then anyway. Um, so I'm going to give them a longer due date, and I'm going to have it be due on the 23rd of December. And in order to make that change to the due date, I need to actually come into the transaction. There's no way to do that from that front screen. So I'm going to do that. I am going to put a note that says giving you an extra week because we will, we will be closed for painting on the normal due date. Okay. So I've made my change to the due date. I made my note so that they know why I did that. And then I'm going to change this to a shipped status. And then I'm going to click Submit. And my request is being processed. And it was successfully updated. And I can go back to my request manager and I see that I have no more pending requests as the lender. Or it's not really back to my request manager, it's back to my lend pending list for lending. My request manager I can return to with the quick link zero and see whether anything has happened since I was here before. No new things have come up that I need to take action on. Um, Someone has accepted a renewal, I have shipped some things, I have something complete, but I don't have to do anything about those because those are all awaiting partner response. So that's something that somebody else has to take action on. So that is how you check for and fill your interlibrary loan requests in the NAES ILL system. If you have questions about any of this, please contact the NAES Help Desk at 603-271-2141 or send an email to the address on your screen. Thank you for watching.